Uh, I wanted to talk with you about your work on the rods, and there's a couple of things I wanted to tell you about them, uh, about the rods. But we need to explain to the audience what what you were doing with the subject of rods, R-O-D-S. You go on the web and just type in uh, uh, rods and then uh, Jose Escabila, and you'll see some extraordinary stuff that Jose has been investigating and video and videoing and, and filming for a long time. Uh, they're, they're referred to as rods. Or sky actually fish. Living sky things. fish, too. Say it also, again? Also, they're, they're referred to as sky fish. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, well, uh, uh, let me tell you what's happening. Uh, back in 1994, I had a UFO encounter at uh, Midway, New Mexico, <clears throat> which is two miles south of uh, the the air base where the 409th Aero Squadron was, you know, that dropped the bomb in Hiroshima. Oh, yeah, yeah. And um, we had UFOs appearing there in broad daylight from March 5th up until currently they're still appearing. But on March 19th, I discovered a phenomena because I was looking in the view cam, uh, viewfinder of the camera and I'd see things fly by super fast and I go, oh, that's a bird, that's a bug, that's an insect, that's a bird, because that's what they appeared to be, yeah. were insects or birds close to the lens of the camera. But when I started looking at the footage, we had insects and you could tell, you know, you could tell the wings and the little yeah, legs and all that. And then we had birds fly by, but then we had these things that looked like flying snakes. Okay, so uh, <laughs> that's right. What in the world are these things? And um, this uh, former girlfriend of mine, she was a nurse. She goes, "Oh, those things look like rods." And I go, "Well, what are rods?" And she goes on to explain to me that in Tabor's medical dictionary, a rod is a bacteria that is like cigar shaped and it has this uh, uh these um, this membrane along both sides of the torso bilaterally and uh that's how they travel and she said they look like rods under the microscope these are microscopic images so that's where the term came for rods because they look like something you'd see under the microscope yeah and it's, so you know we wow. started drumming these things and uh it turns out that we now have, I mean, and this is going on 22 years of researching the rods phenomena. Um, first of all, I had these idiots out there, Monster Quest did a number on me. They tried to explain the rods away as being nothing but misfilmed insects. And they did a trick on people. They, uh, they set up a high-speed camera with a low-speed regular camera, but they did it at night. And well, you night, can't see it anyway. Yeah, you, you, it compromises the shutter setting of your regular camcorder. The high-speed camera will film things as they are. So, but they, the producers knew this. They, uh, they didn't do the broad daylight uh, high-speed test because they had set up at this uh, hummingbird area where they had hummingbirds, and they said hummingbirds are the closest thing to rods, which is BS. But uh, they set up in broad daylight, and they said, well, no hummingbirds have shown up today, so we're not going to do the broad daylight high-speed camera test and regular camcorder test in broad daylight. So that's how they got out of having to do that. And believe me, if they would have done the camera test in broad daylight with the high-speed oh, yeah. camera and the camcorder using my sky fishing protocol, they would have gotten total different results than what they got at night. So anyway, that's how they fooled the American people. But um, for 22 years, I've been waiting on the opportunity to catch a rod, either catch a specimen or to catch the best footage of a rod. And we finally have, Jordan, we finally have a rod filmed at 2,000 frames per second using the epic red cam, which is a, uh, the red camera is a, the highest resolution camera in the world, okay? Oh, wow. So we now have a rod shot at 2,000 frames per second, 4K resolution, which is awesome. Broad daylight at uh, 2,000 frames and at 29, uh, 24 frames per second. That means it's true, 24 frames. There's no interlacing video, which is the, the debunkers use interlacing, saying that's what's causing the rod effect. Well, no, yeah. 
We have 24 frames per second, 2,000 frames high speed, super slow motion. And guess what? The rod is awesome, man. We finally have the footage that I've been waiting for that not only proves that rods are real, but shows you what a rod looks like, man. Yeah. So it's uh, highly intelligent, too. Oh, yeah. These things, we now have footage of them uh, on Mars. We have wow. footage taken by the rover on Mars. And you can see, the you know, the one, one of the things that the rods are known for is they have the undulation uh, fins on both sides of the body. Yeah, yeah. Wave fins. The, the rods that are filmed on Mars have the wave fins, man. Undeniable. All right? Wow. And that's NASA stuff, man. And there's no insects on Mars. So if that's an insect... It's a big, giant insect, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So we now have that, and we also have a gentleman in Washington, D.C. that's using the same cameras that NASA uses on the International Space Station, and he's got these cameras with the highest ISO rating, um, which I, I wouldn't even begin to know what ISO means, but um, he's got the most amazing rod footage squadrons of rods flying over Washington, D.C. in the no-fly zone. He's got squadrons of these things, man, and you can see them. You can see their wave fins. It's amazing what these things look like, man, and he's yeah. got incredible footage. Well, I need to tell the people what we're talking about, like I said, is uh, is something we call RODS, R-O-D-S. Yep. And you can go on the web and just type in RODS in, uh, in, uh, you know, in the, in the you'll video. Find, and, you'll find and, it. Yeah, and you'll find it. But it's, 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 it, it has to be some kind of a living, uh, entity that's, yeah. that's like, uh, it's like a snake. It's like an eel. It, it, it operates like an eel or a snake in that it's long, slender, but it's extremely fast. And yes. it takes, uh, and you, but, but, uh, and, and it slips, it'll pass it by you instantly. And your eye catches something past, but it was so quick. So you have to back up the, the tape and go through it one frame at a time. And then you see this, this snake-like thing flying through the air. Well, now we find out like, well, like uh, uh, you were saying, is that these things are everywhere, and they're yeah. cont- and they're big, little, long. <laughs> it's an incredible life form that we don't know what they are. Uh, did we figure out anything about what they might, in fact, be? No. Uh, the thing is, is we now also have footage of rods underwater, and wow. I've got some of, some of the most amazing. Um, you know, technology has finally caught up to the rods phenomenon. I mean, we've got a guy off of the, the coast of Florida that's, uh, you know, he's messing around with sharks and stuff. But he, he said, man, this thing just flew past us. It was super fast. And he said it looked like a rod with these things on the side. And uh, he had never heard of rods until he did a Google search. And now uh, we have footage that he took underwater of rods flying along with sharks and super fast in, in, in the water. So we have rods underwater. We have them in our skies. We have rods shot by the shuttle cameras, the International Space Station uh, in space. And then now we have rods on Mars. So these uh, things... It's just incredible. It's an incredible entity of some kind. The reason we say it's a living entity is because it has the behavior of something that's intelligent mm-hmm. and it, it is it was super fast. Anyone that's out there in your listening audience, if you've ever seen a dark or a white object pass in front of your face real fast or in your eye peripheral and you looked and you thought automatically it's an insect or a bird and you look and there's nothing there, you probably had a rod encounter. That's exactly right. And uh, is. I, I had about a dozen uh, uh, that I saved uh, of movies, motion pictures and movies. Just a, yeah. mo- uh, just a movie 
where, and then I saw, because I rented the, the video, and I saw the rod shoot past the scene, and I backed it up, and be damn, in the movie. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you, anytime you got a camera going, if you got a camera running, these things are everywhere. They're in all of, all around us. So I don't care if you're shooting a movie or, uh, or, or, or at a congressional hearing. It doesn't matter. These things are everywhere, but they, they move so fast that you, that you don't see them normally unless you happen to be concentrating on, on a picture or a movie or something and you yeah. just see instantly something shoot past. Go back oh, and back it up and then you'll find out this was a rod, whatever I'm doing, it is. I'm know. doing this new movie and the final uh, movie on Rods is called They Live in the Skies. And I have footage of Obama at his inaugural address and there's two rods that fly behind the Washington Monument while Obama's over here saying his they're back. that big? They're that big? That you huge. Can see them? Yeah. They were huge, man. They fly behind the Washington Monument. So no idiot can say, oh, that's an insect. Yeah. No, idiot. These nope. things behind the Washington Monument, that it's about uh, maybe 500 yards away from where the camera was set up. Yep. And we also have footage of them underwater. International Space Station, man, we've got some incredible stuff on rods, man. Yep, you know, I know. And also, uh, you know, you, I remember, I, I think it was at that, uh, at that conference back in 94 that, uh, or, or maybe it was up in Frisco, but, um, I went with you and three or four other guys and we went up to your room at the hotel and you were showing us some videos that you had just taken. Mm -hmm. And I remember you talking about that these rods uh, seem to congregate around high electrical force fields, the electrical fields like electrical power lines, the big yeah. ones, the big, the big power lines. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And they do. They still do. I've got footage of uh, some rods flying over the house here, you know, my house where I'm at. Of course, yeah. And there's some power lines that are next door. That's right. That's some incredible footage, man. Yep. And it's broad daylight footage. These things, um, a lot of people say, well, you know, I've never seen a rod at night. Well, there are, I do have footage of rods at night. Wilbur Allen, the guy in Washington, D.C., is using these uh, cameras that uh, International yep. Space Station uses at night. But they're high velocity cameras, man, high speed. And uh the rods are amazing, man. All well, I can tell obviously people, they don't sleep, so if they're all around us during the day, they're all they're around us moving. during the night. Yep. They are always moving. I've never always. seen a rod stand still. However, in our movie I have a shot of a rod filmed uh on infrared at night in the UK of a rod falling downward. You know, most of these rods fly left to right, right yep. to left, yep. up and down in the screen. This rod is still, but it's coming downward, if you can imagine that. <laughs> so we now have a rod that's falling straight down. And the only time I had a, a shot of a rod that was falling straight down <clears throat> is a shot that's going to be in the movie, but it's a shot at the Cave of the Swallows in Mexico which we found a nest of them. But there's this base jumper that's falling downward, okay? He's doing 90 miles an hour, which is close to terminal velocity. Terminal velocity is the uh, the speed that a human body falls downward, okay? Terminal velocity. This guy is in perfect uh, focus. The camera is filming him down the back of the cave, area where he's falling downward is a blur, but he's a perfect focus as yeah. the camera is falling him, following him fall downward. But what happens is he's going down and a rod flies underneath him, makes a U-turn and goes back where it came from. Split yeah, back. you know, I've seen that, I think. Uh, I, think I, you, I think I showed you that footage. Yeah, I, I think you did. What's amazing is that this guy's falling downward at 90 miles an hour, and so is the rod. But yeah. at the same time, the rod is moving left to right and making a U-turn, falling downward, 
90 miles an hour, but left to right and making the U-turn at the same time. Yep. That's an amazing, incredible thing. No one's ever seen anything like that. I've never seen anything like that in my life. And this is a living entity of some kind, I think. We don't know what they're at. Where the well, front well, we don't know, but, the, but, but they are obviously living because they're moving and they, they are obviously intelligent. They have an intelligence. I mean, uh, yep. you know, we could say that fish have some kind of an intelligence. They know what they're doing. They know where they want to go. That's the same thing. What these, these things we call rods, they, they're long, uh, living, uh, things that are right in front of you. And, and they are here. In their own, doing their own purpose. They are doing their own thing. There's nothing we could do to control them. I had a guy that came up. He says, you know, I'm a hunter. I hunt wildlife and everything else. He says, I want to go with you to the cave of the swallows and I'm going to bring one of these down with my shotgun. And I go, dude, I would hate to piss one of these things off. <laughs> I mean, what are you going to do? If you piss one of these things off and it comes after you, you can't even see them. And what are you going to do when it comes at you? It's going to take you down, bro. You know, forget you. Yeah. (laughs) And you know what? I've seen uh, uh, on on the on the on YouTube. uh, There's a somebody was filming a storm uh, that was coming. It was brewing a big storm. It was in the Midwest, I think, like Kansas, Oklahoma. Yeah. And they were in an apartment that was obviously upstairs, and it was a. Uh, and they were out in the balcony, and they were filming the clouds forming and looking like it was maybe going to be a tornado. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, out of that cloud, well, miles away, you could see this huge rod come down, and stop, move backwards and forwards, and then shoot back up into the cloud again, and instantly, boom, 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 and. And but if you slow it down, there's a huge rod comes out of that cloud, comes down, stops, turns around, and shoots back up into the into the cloud. And in a split second, they in a split second, all within a, less than a second. And, I had uh, some of the most incredible rod footage uh, associated with a tornado. This was the <clears throat> the the biggest tornado to hit, and this was back in ninety ninety six, I think it was. Um, in Oklahoma City, it was a big, huge tornado, 300 mile an hour funnel, that kind oh of thing. God. And I've got these rods, man. Uh, the helicopter, the weather helicopter was 15 miles away from the, the cell, the, yeah. the big thunder cell. 15 miles away, and a rod flies out of the, ca- the clouds and lasts three frames. It comes out and goes back into the clouds. And then there's another rod shot with the same helicopter uh, footage of in the funnel that's another 20 miles away. A huge rod goes right into the funnel 20 miles away. And this rod is almost the same thickness as the funnel. I mean, what are these things, man? They're big. They're small. They're tiny. They're huge. They're Uh, they're all sizes. Uh, and they all seem to be living uh, tissue, living things, but they move so quickly. And uh, like I said, uh, Jose has been doing a lot of research on this over the 22 years. Twenty years, twenty two yeah. years, man. And we finally have the footage that proves they are real. So once I release this movie, they live in the skies. Oh, and I'm also including a segment, an area there of uh, orbs, you know, these light orbs. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. man, I have some incredible stuff. Uh, there was a guy in Tokyo, Japan, that was living in a uh, high building, about 20 stories, you know. Yeah. And he's filming, he's photographing these orbs that are appearing outside his window. And these orbs were amazing. They had spikes all around them. Spikes, man, you know. <laughs> and... uh this one shot that he filmed that he sent me is this orb that's probably about uh, 10 blocks away from where he's at. Now, this is 20 stories high, 20 stories up. Yeah. This orb is shining next to a uh, big 
a 20 or 30 story building that's next to it and its reflection appears on the windows. Well, that's pretty that's pretty trippy stuff. It's boy. amazing. Yeah, I'm going to have that in my film, man. You know, so yeah. uh um, a lot of good stuff coming out with They Live in the Skies, man. We're going to prove that this entity exists among us, and we're going to prove that there's an unidentified flying object that we finally have solid evidence that it's there. Yep, no doubt until, about it. Until we catch one and dissect it and find out more about it, we won't know what it's made up of or what its purpose is. But we can tell you this, this film proves that these things are there. Yeah, you know, I don't think we're ever, I don't think humans are ever going to be able to capture one. It's, it's the kind of thing my gut tells me these things are too, uh, they're not of this world. too damn world. fast. How do you yeah. catch something that you can barely see? That's right. And yeah. it moves at such a speed that even cameras, uh, you know, you just have to by chance happen to be uh, exactly. filming something to see it. But I've seen them in movies, television shows. Oh, man, uh, I've got a, a film. Uh, an IMAX movie that was uh, released. It was called, uh, gosh, what is it? It's called Adrenaline Rush or something like that. Yeah. And there's a helicopter that's above this uh, cliff area in the fjords of Norway. And there's snow down there, and these base jumpers are about to take a leap off the cliff. And the helicopter is there filming them, and a huge white rod flies right above their heads. No, I love it. And you can't, you know, you can't say that's a bird or an insect because, number one, it's too doggone cold. And number two, this thing, if it would have been a bird or something close to the camera lens, the downdraft to the helicopter blades would have, you know. Of course, of course. This yeah. thing flies right above the base jumper heads, left to right. And then the helicopter moves forward, and there's other rods that are flying downward, in, down into the... Uh, uh, beach area of the fjords, the cliffs there at the fjords. It's an amazing, some amazing footage. Also, you've heard of the movies, The Expendables? Yeah, I've heard, I think I have, yeah. Okay, yes. in the movie Expendables 3, there's a shot where Jean-Claude Van Damme helicopter is landing. There's a rod that flies through the helicopter blades. It's a white rod that flies through the helicopter blades. I've got that footage. It's there, the Expendables 3. That's that's amazing that it has the, it can go through the blades. Through the blades, man. You'd think this thing would be chopped up, man. I'm wondering if it goes through walls, uh, if, because that's why they are, you know, you can see them in your bedroom if you, you know, if you've got a camera or whatever. Yeah, they're, I, they're all I don't over. Know. I don't know about them going through walls because... What, uh, the footage that I have them entering the ocean, they leave bubble trails. So that means that they have mass. Oh, okay. That's good. So, That's good to I, know. I used to, I used to think that these things entered the ground, came out of the ground, but they were just flying so fast and above the ground, you know, very low to the ground, that I thought they were going into the ground. But uh, I don't have any footage of a rod entering solid matter. Yeah, yeah. But... I've got everything else, brother. I've got everything else. Well, it's one hell of a story.